The Goat Owls is back just after Monday Night Football, breaking down how I think each NFL team looked in week one. We got tiers with letter grades. We're going to put all 32 teams in one of those options there. Let's get to it. The poor Panthers have their own tier, which is essentially an F tier, playing on the Panthers level. And it was a brutal one. I did not expect them to play as bad as they did, getting dominated by the Saints. It could have been a close game. The gut punch, what kind of makes you sick, is, well, not just that Derrick Brown got injured, but possibly their best player, but they made their defense worse in the act of making the offense better, and we'll see how that goes throughout the year, but it was quite evident, it was quite obvious that the defense got worse based on their offseason moves, but the offense, only week one, but the offense did not get any better. It, it, it showed no signs of progression. It almost feels worse because it didn't, so... That's kind of the gut punch there for the Panthers and why they uh, created their own tier and they're at the bottom. Some of you might have thought that the, the Panthers were going to be the only team in the Panthers tier, but no, the Giants are going to join them down there as well. Those are the two teams in that bottom tier. Thought about some other ones. They barely made that D tier, but the Giants were brutal on both sides of the ball. I mean, the Vikings supposed to be, maybe they're better than expected, but supposed to be a very winnable game and they had nothing going. They, they had a gift in the beginning with the fumble, can't execute, Pretty good field position. Cannot It just makes things worse. They can't execute on offense. Daniel Jones is brutal. The only weapon out there is neighbors. Pass protection isn't all that great. Wasn't god-awful. And, and defense, you know, Thibodeau disappointing. And Vikings are able to run and throw on them. And they're able to kind of park the bus, hit the brakes, and not allow any sort of comeback. So the Giants were one of the worst teams in football in week one. And they're going to have to dig themselves out of, out of the hole to not be one of the worst, you know, in general. Unfortunately, a lot of teams in the D tier, the Falcons being at the top of it, meaning they're the closest to being in the C grade tier. And I thought about that because the defense played well and there was a lot on their plate given how the offense was. But bottom line is they were a sloppy team and the offense was brutal. Kirk Cousins was brutal. Their game plan was wrecked. The offensive line was worse than expected. Uh, just couldn't do anything, obviously. And, and the Steelers, given that the Steelers had not much offense and, their starting quarterback was out. It was Justin Fields in there. The Falcons are at home. It, it, you got some gifts. You, you, you got to execute. You cannot be that bad. So they're in the D tier. The Raiders, I mean, at times they, they looked like they could win that game. They were in front for a little bit, but shot themselves in, in, in the foot. Really no bright spots overall in terms of units for that team. But the big thing here why they're in the D tier is the Chargers really didn't look all that great. The, they were getting pressure on defense great turnovers, but the offense didn't really have anything outside a couple J.K. Dobbins plays, and the, and the Chargers still easily won that game. That just cannot happen for the Raiders. The Broncos, yes, the Broncos were competitive for a little bit. They were winning. They were causing problems for the Seahawks, so that sounds like a better tier, but man, something you know that, that doesn't sit with me well is that things went their way. I mean, went their way in this game. Like luck was on their side. Things were bouncing their way. They were getting safeties. They started the game with a gift interception from Geno. Teams typically win those games, especially in week one. That's what kind of what causes those crazy upsets. And the Seahawks won with ease. I mean, there was a late touchdown for the Broncos to make it look like it's close, but with all the things going your way and for you to easily lose, that's it's bad. That's pretty bad sign. Like I always say, that's my saying. Like if you can't win that one, which one are you gonna win? Which games are gonna win? Of course, they're gonna win some games, but that's tough. The Browns almost in that Panthers tier. Uh, tough go without their offensive tackles. The defense wasn't as bad as the score may show. They had a lot in their plate. They were slowing the Cowboys down for the most part uh, in that game, believe it or not. But, yeah, really bad outing for Deshaun Watson and, you know, them being without their tackles. And the run game kind of got taken away early because they were down by so much. So there was some factors like that, the Cowboys just being by far the better team. And the Bengals doing Bengals things and losing in week one, losing to the Patriots. Uh, you know, if it just sloppy, just, you know, fumbled punt. Hudson fumbling on the half yard line. That's kind of what caused it. If that those things didn't happen, I bet you they come back and win the game. But that's an assumption. You know, defense kind of kept them in the game for the most part. The the run defense is really what I'm worried about. That's kind of what's going to hold them back from, because once they're in season, like kicking in the gear, and if they're healthy, you feel like they could be a championship team. But that is that one thing actually. Not no more. 
the offensive line too, but it's not really so much that anymore. It's more the run defense is what I worry about most, and it kind of showed up in a game like this. So those teams are D. The ones at the top are kind of closer to being C. The ones at the bottom are pretty close to that Panthers tier. You don't want to be in that Panthers tier. The C tier, which isn't awful. It's not great. There's some teams that won that are in the C tier. The Chargers being at the top, Chargers and the Bears being at the top of the C tier, like a C plus. Those are C plus teams to me. Yeah, Chargers, I mean, they pulled off a win, uh, kind of a coin flip type game, even though I expected the Chargers win, maybe expected a little more. Uh, you know, the defense got pressure. They made plays. The Raiders did kind of give them a little, some gifts there. But yeah, my issue is the offense, they really relied on a couple big plays. I mean, it was more than a couple plays, but really J.K. Dobbins had two big plays that like if it, you take those away, like you really don't have much going, not much in the passing game. Uh, you know, Herbert was pressured quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, they, they ran the ball pretty well and the defense interior defense line played much better than expected. They got pressure. They created turnovers. So that because of that defense, it kind of wants me to put them in the tier ahead, but just, just not much going for them. That offense looks like it's, it's that game's telling me that offense could lose them games because there's not much going. They're relying on some, you know, just staying in the game and kind of hoping we get a home run play here and there. Um, you know, and the Raiders, the Raiders were were outplaying them for a bit, and they were moving the ball, actually, even though the, overall the Chargers defense, I would grade the defense better than the C. They were moving the ball a bit, and they just kind of just shoot themselves in the foot, or the Chargers make a good play. And the Bears, similar situation where the defense played great. Uh, special teams played great as well. They come back and win. Overall, felt like they got outplayed by the Titans for most of this game. Um, the defense is right where I thought it would be, so no surprise. Like I thought it'd be very good. Special teams may be a little bit better, but the offense is a lot lower than expectations in the game. They had one of the worst offenses, offensive outings in Week One, and that kind of makes you think: Is this going to be a problem? Are they going to lose games because they can't do anything on offense? The offense really were they were not responsible for a single point if you watch this game. So. It's hard to be any higher on them than that. They did win. You definitely can't. You definitely can't put him any lower than that. Give him a C plus defense. Special team stands out. Titans. The Titans. You almost want to put lower because Will Levis was bad. The offensive line wasn't great. Um, you know, and they choked that that game. The special teams was bad as well. But the, they had one of the better defenses in Week One. I mean, they shut down the Bears, which should have been a tougher game plan too. So that's kind of what's keeping them up. Definitely the Bears ahead of them because they beat them, but. Um, yeah, the defense looked really, really good for half this game. I'm like, okay, the Titans are sneaky. And then they – fluky things, fluky, you know, things happen, which caused them to choke. Uh, but they get a C. The Jets just played on Monday night. They're down the C range. Um, you know, overall, really disappointing, really bad outing, especially given that Christian McCaffrey w was out. I mean, multiple guys were, were out, obviously, and they you know, had guys kind of walking off the field at times as well. Run defense was extremely disappointing. Uh, there, so is that an issue? You know, the pass defense, you only can do so much with pass defense. Uh, but overall, the defense wasn't that great, and the offense, you know, still, I wasn't thrilled. Will, Garrett Wilson had one good drive. Brees Hall had some yardage, you know, if you combine rushing and receiving and a touchdown. But those guys, you know, the stats may not show it. I don't think they played good games for really good players that they are. Um, you know, so very disappointing, but they had flashes. You know, Aaron Rodgers had some vintage flashes, of course. Um, you know, the defense had flashes early, so they're definitely not lower than the C. And the commanders I had in the D range, we bumped them up because they kind of stayed in this game, even though it may not look like it. At times, it's like, all right, the Bucs are going to win big. And it's like, wait, well, hey, here come the commanders. And Daniels didn't play god awful. He, he ran pretty well. Uh, the corners got beat up pretty badly there. But they made some plays that, like, you know, at the end of the day, they didn't, weren't really in the game, but they were kind of sticking in there. They weren't nearly as bad. Yeah, maybe, maybe somewhat close, but weren't as bad as the deranged teams. So, yeah, there are some definitely teams at the top that are, are were very, the Chargers Bears were very close to being in the, a tier above because they won the game, but it's really not a win loss tier. There would only be two tiers that way. Uh, really wasn't overly thrilled, but they did win at, at the end of the day in week one, all that matters. Ended up making a BC tier. So, this is like B minus C plus. I originally, you know, had teams that just did not fit strictly with the teams in B and strictly with the teams in C. So, this is right smack in the middle. Kind of a mixture of teams that won but not overly impressed at all, but they were better than the Chargers and Bears. Uh, and then the other teams are teams that lost, but I was kind of impressed with them in, in a way. But starting at the top, the Dolphins, good comeback win. They were explosive at the end, but at the end of the day, they got outplayed by the Jags in this game. Javon Holland made an incredible play. More guys made good plays, but Holland saved the game. 
punching out. But if ETN scores, I mean, talk about a game of inches. That that game's over. The Dolphins aren't coming back. Um, they were really stale early. They were moving the ball, and they would make some sort of mistake. Uh, you know, so I don't know if that's a kind of week one jitters and what happened with Tyreek Hill. Maybe legitimate excuses, possibly. Uh, but I, I thought they had the makings, like uh, the ability to look way better than that. And they did get outplayed, but they won. They're on the high end of this list. Seattle Seahawks, the positive is everything went wrong for them and they still won with ease. Like looking at it that way, that's fantastic. But they were really sloppy. Geno Smith starts with an interception, couple safeties, holding Geno dropping way back, holding, and then the slow run that you know took so much time, uh, just really sloppy. But with all that, they they still end up you know figuring out, uh, adjusting in the second half, which I love. I think the Seahawks are gonna be better than people think, but a little sloppy for them to be a little higher in this. Cardinals over overall, I was impressed. They blew a comeback. The defense looked kind of bad, so that's why it's tough putting them this high. But I thought Kyler Murray looked really good. I thought the offense was super explosive. A couple drops. Miss Marvin Harrison on that one play, but they have run game, they have pass game, they're tough to deal with. They started well. They got a, that was kind of a thing for the Cardinals last year, even so. Maybe time will tell, but overall, impressed with Murray and, and the Cardinals, even though they lost. Colts as well. I mean, they're a tough one too because Richardson was so hit or miss. One second he's elite, one second he's awful. I, I mean, that's the kind of player he's going to be for a little bit. Um, you know, and they gave up so much production. They couldn't stop the run. They couldn't stop the pass. And saying it like all that makes it seem like they're going to be in that D tier, maybe. But they're explosive, and they were they were they were bare misses. Like they had, they were so close of plays. Ad Mitchell getting open downfield that that the Colts could have hit, and they could have been more in this game. And they were in this game, given that things weren't really going right. So it's like. Ah, yeah, they gave up so many yards, so much production, and they kind of failed in big moments and lost the game. But there is some hope there. I see upside with the Colts. The Jags, they choked. I'm not through with Doug Peterson in this game in the second half. Not through with ETM. But they they looked pretty damn good for most of this game, actually, offensively and especially defensively. Uh, they outplayed the Dolphins, but they lost. That's not a good thing. But they did outplay them. So some positives there. And then the Packers... On that sloppy field, both those teams had mistakes because that field, you know, both of them play on the same field, obviously. But there was some good with the Packers. Uh, the tough part is, I mean, they are, if you factor in injuries, you know, they're, they're kind of a loser on the week because Love's going to miss some time. Uh, but, you know, you can see the different looks they give on offense, the different packages, how explosive they are, how fast they are. They can they got the run game going. They can beat you the run, the pass. They were in this game. You know, they are outplaying the Eagles for – Maybe most of it, actually. Uh, defense, you know, end up being a little underwhelming. I really think affected by the field, but the Eagles were as well. Um, not overly concerned. Well, I'm concerned without love, but that's for sure a little bit. But they're going to land at the bottom of this tier here, in right in the middle. On to the B tier. A couple teams that actually lost in this tier. We'll start at the bottom there with the Rams. I mean, given that the disastrous injuries going into the game and during the game and going forward – and they didn't get a chance to get the ball, and that's how it works, but they didn't get the chance to get the ball in overtime. Like, they had a chance to win this game. They, they played per, pretty well. They were finding ways. So, overall, I was impressed. I mean, there were some sloppy moments right before half with Stafford, and he did throw a couple more. He had some amazing plays, and he had, you know, some turnover-worthy plays as well. But given the circumstances and how bad that defense looks on paper, and I thought it played fairly well except for, that, for overtime in the Lions just pounded them in overtime, obviously. The Rams didn't get a shot on offense, but I was mainly referring to the defense. Um, but overall, impressed there. And the Ravens, there were some sloppy moments. Uh, the illegal formation. Lamar was off throwing the ball, but, I mean, was insane on the ground and likely playing well. And um, Henry, you know, doing doing a little bit of damage. And, you know, defense could be a little bit better. But overall, you could see it's an explosive good team. They played the best team in football. So um, I feel good with them. And the, right there with the Rams at the bottom of the beer, beat the B -T, uh, tier, excuse me, the Bills started off awful. I am a little worried about the defense, but the bounce back, the offense was so good, showing to be the one of the best offenses in football. And the Cardinals looked pretty good. And the Bills to be able to come back in week one when things really aren't going their way. Uh, losing the time of possession like right away, and it's just draining the Bills' chances. And then uh, Josh Allen gets strip sacked from behind. And they'll be able to come back from all that with that explosive offense, and they belong in the B tier. And then the three next teams are maybe a little bit higher. The Lions, Lions were on like good uh, overtime was dominant. That like that kind of gets me going. That overtime, you know, I wish the Rams got a shot, but. Uh, how dominant, how physical, how uh, just all that, just it, it kind of gives you almost like 
chills uh, to me. Uh, that's just, <laughs> you know, how, how dominant that was. And that's the Lions I expected. Like, where was that Lions all game? They were trying to throw, and Goff wasn't really playing well when the run game wasn't involved that much. Run game was doing fine. Overall, they were, they outplayed the Rams r- throughout this game for the most part. Uh, but, I, I you know, the, la- the, the Rams being depleted and in Detroit, uh, you know, the Lions should really have dominated this game the way it went, but they did in overtime. But um, overall, you could see it's a physical, really solid team here. Uh, felt like, uh, even though they can play a little bit better, it felt like you could kind of see that they're getting going in the right direction in terms of the cornerback position, which was much needed, which we kind of figured what they added uh, during the offseason. Eagles, they had some sloppy moments. I blame the field a lot. I, you know, Hurts, the field didn't make Hurts make those bad decisions, but it was a big part of everybody but those quarterbacks they couldn't plant and throw um and and Barkley started by slipping and he really got going he was awesome obviously AJ Brown got going I mean Hertz was questionable at times but he made some big plays that last drive to continue to extend that um defensively they weren't great but there was some things that popped up obviously um impressed with Kellen Moore in his first game calling that team I give them a B uh things didn't go their way in the beginning of this game and they end up finding a way to score points and win the football game against a really good team in Brazil and the Patriots beating the Bengals um defense was great Stevenson was great Brissett did his job well coached uh big time upset only reason they're not higher is yeah things were going their way the Bengals were you know fumbling the punt fumble right in the half yard line I'm not sure what what Hudson was doing with the ball there I, I know Duggar punched it out but I'm, I'm not sure kind of a gift in, in a way um so do a little more on offense close it out a little easier that felt like for a second the Bengals were going to come back uh so perfect world they fixed that and they're in the a range but overall very impressive the a tier the Kansas City Chiefs took care of business on Thursday night a little bit of a scare that's you know that's the knock on that they should put that game away but it's the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes made plays. Rasheed Rice was awesome. He looked faster. Pacheco looked really solid. Uh, and then defensively, they made plays when they needed to. They need when they needed to clutch up. So it just felt like a, a, a not the best Chiefs performance, but pretty clo- pretty. Uh, I shouldn't even say pretty close because we know they're capable of much more than that. Even though that was very good. Steelers in the A tier. You could say the offense. You know what was disappointing it was all field goals and they were kind of given gifts and that maybe they should be in a tier lower because of that I understand that but given that they they had to go to their second string quarterback given that they're going to Atlanta the Falcons are all new good coaching staff good players very tough game plan uh all that and they kind of overcome those things and the defense was elite TJ Watt was elite uh they they outplayed the Falcons even if the Falcons kind of shot themselves in the foot here and there um you know so given the circumstances and how that defense played uh, did not expect them at all to win this game. I put them in an A tier. Cowboys are definitely high up in the A tier. Uh, dominant performance. This game fell over pretty quick. The offense didn't do a whole lot. Didn't really need to, I guess. They made plays when they needed to. Um, if uh, you know, that's right, right on fringe of being A plus. The offense did a little bit more. But the defense was awesome. I love seeing Zimmer's defense. He's a really good defensive coach. A um, lot of guys led by Micah Parsons played very well in that defense. Yeah, they're close to being in that that best tier. Texans, I talked about in the other the last video as well. Uh, kind of, kind of a weird one. I mean, they're they're so explosive. You see how they could be so good, uh, so explosive on offense. They make plays on defense. I mean, so productive. The running game, the passing game. That you know, the receivers, Nico Collins making plays. One of the best players I watched this week. All that you know, executing on third, big third downs, fourth downs when you absolutely need to. They executed. You love that. It looks really good for the long run. Definitely think they're a serious, serious title contender, uh, Super Bowl contender. Uh, the only knock is that with all that, you know, the Colts were somehow, even though I wasn't really worried about the Texans and they were kind of keeping that lead, it was like, all right, Texans got it, and the Colts getting a little closer, and the Texans pull away, and the Colts getting a little closer. So it never was a, that much of a threat. But the way that game went for them and they perfectly executed on like fourth, that like we talked about third down, fourth down, uh, in the stats, like they they should probably win that game in in, in a beatdown or close to. So if I had to nitpick, that was the only thing. So if things don't go their way, I'm not really you know what's going to happen, but I'm not really worried about them. I, I'm very high on them for the long run of this season and the future. But that's in my opinion where they belong. So there's those teams, the Cowboys. The more I was talking about them, they're the, probably the closest one to being in that best tier. Defense was unreal. Um, they took advantage of the Browns having their tackles out of that game, but some impressive teams overall. And the best tier, I mean, at the top, the team that just got done playing just, just moments ago, the 49ers were the best team I watched this week. 
Uh, they hopped over the Saints and the Bucks for that, and the Vikings right behind. Uh, the Niners just looked dominant, just looked like in you know Niners form uh, without McCaffrey. I mean, Trent Williams was cramping because he just came back, and uh, Hufunga's out, and they got multiple players out. Uh, Jawan Jennings went down at one point, so I mean, they, you know, more than that as well. Uh, Jordan Mason looked absolutely dominant. Purdy was getting better and smarter as the game went on. Love that. Great play calling. Uh, uh, Debo was awesome. Uh, the run blocking legit looks improved from last year. It's only week one, but playing against that Jets defense, uh, and the defense was flying around and making big-time plays. At first, the third down struggles. They looked dominant on first down, second, and there were some third down struggles briefly. Um, uh, and before that, Fred Warner had that awesome punch out uh, of Brees Hall, but uh, then they figured it out, making big time. They're, they're the best football team uh, I, I watched for sure, even though the Saints had the biggest margin of victory and they were absolutely dominant. I actually thought they could be close with the Panthers, but that game was over instantly. They were great, unpredictable on offense and defense, fantastic. The Buccaneers were one of the more dominant teams this week. Baker Mayfield is one of the more dominant players. Uh, Rashad White catching the ball, Bucky Irving running the ball. The receivers, are, they got so many good receivers. Mike Evans, Chris Goblin, these guys were great. Offensive line looks Great, looked like one of the better ones in football. Defensively, they got beat up, and they still made plays. So I thought the Bucs were fantastic. Really thrilled with Baker Mayfield and company. And the Vikings put together a complete game as well, looking for the teams in this tier to be you know, complete full games. Do I like you on offense, defense, all of the above? I do. And the Vikings did that. I, I'm used to the Vikings letting teams come back in these situations. They they hit, you know, they hit the brakes and they and they, they did it. You know, 28 to six. It finishes that way. But Aaron Jones played a good game. Darnold played played great. The offense line got better as, as the game went on. You know, hitting throws, executing. Just big moments, like when the defense was backed up, they were constantly like right away, and the Giants had good field position. The defense made a play, a couple interceptions, Van Ginkle interception, a pick six was great. Just when they both sides the ball, when you absolutely you know, fourth down an offense, when you when you absolutely need to make a play, they made a play. So they had a pretty complete game. Um, did play the Giants or the Saints? Did play the Panthers? That really isn't the point of this video, though. Just who plays? Who looks great? Who looks good? Who plays complete games? So uh, it's not really um, – I know we're going to have complainers like this team won, this team lost, but it's not – if that if we wanted that type of video, it would be two tiers, a W and an L. It would be pretty stupid. Um, you know, so that's where I have it. If uh, you guys like this video, if it seems to be somewhat, somewhat popular, even just that, then we can do this every single uh, Monday night after that Monday night football game. But we got loads of content we're working on right now. For week two, cannot wait for our week two pick, score predictions, power rankings, and much, much more every single week. So join us. Don't forget to subscribe. You're going to want to turn notifications on. Been rolling out with more shorts. Been loving those. So check it out. It's going to do it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>